All right, we want to get started. We don't want to waste anybody's time. It's a little after seven. We've still got a row of cars down the road uh, that we're trying to park. So if you would be so kind, if you have empty spots next to you, I know it's kind of awkward sometimes to, to sit right next to folks, but I think we're going to need every chair in this room to be able to sit everyone. So if, if you're okay with it, scoot over. If not, if not, you're welcome to wait until it's the last point and we'll have to, to force it. We still have we still have some seats up kind of towards the front you guys I just had everybody squish in together as best as they could so if you if you want to come up to the front um, or if you have a couple spots maybe if you'd let people know coming through I'm gonna go ahead and start out with some some uh, house house cleaning for us um, if you need to use the restroom while you're here down at the end of the, uh, the out this double door down the stairs uh, the men's room is to the right, women's room is to the left. Um, there is a, um, an elevator in the hallway if you, if you can't get down the stairs um, or grab one of the, the city staff and we're happy to help. So thank you guys all so much for coming out. I think we're going to go ahead and, and get started. Like I said, um, I, I, uh, I really appreciate you guys all coming out. I know that uh, there's a lot of rumors going around of changes coming to uh, your neighborhood and to uh, Idaho Falls, I guess, in, in the Old Butte section um, that we wanted to address. There were some an, enough rumors getting out and we heard it uh, in so many twisted ways that we thought the best way to, to handle that obviously was to get everybody in a room and just have a, a, a discussion on the future plans um, and what the, the future looks like. I do want to set up uh, a few ground rules. Um, we are hopefully going to be able to take answer as many questions as we possibly can, but we do only have until eight o'clock in here tonight. So what we are going to do is we have a we have about a twenty minute presentation, and then we are going to break up between the two maps. Uh, our airport director will will stand up here at this map. Um, myself, uh, I'm uh, PJ Holm. I'm the Parks and Recreation director. Um, I'll be in the back corner here. We can split off and answer as many questions as we can. We'll also give you some uh, ways to reach out to us after this meeting that uh, if you have additional questions that didn't get answered, we're happy to try to answer those to the best of our abilities for you. Um, but we will take as many questions as we can handle today. Uh, hopefully everybody signed in. If you didn't, please do so on the way out. Um, the purpose of that, we want to collect as many emails as we can so that as we, as we move forward, um, there's going to be a continuation of a master plan for the airport continuing throughout the year and future meetings. And so we want to make sure that we stay in communication with you guys and make sure that uh, your neighborhood is aware of when those meetings will be so that you can, you can come and, and be part of that process. So um, if there are um, uh, no questions, I guess, or, and nobody else that we're waiting on, we're going to go ahead and get started. So again, my name is PJ Holm. I'm the director of the Parks and Recreation Department here in the city. Um, we've got Rick Cloutier here, who is the airport director, and um, and we are we're here to hopefully be able to address concerns, questions, rumors, and be able to put some concern uh, at ease a little bit after this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic over to to Rick, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you. Well, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. Um, we do think that this, uh, this information will help everybody understand what's going on in the future and uh, be able to help you be more involved as we go forward. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Maybe helps if I turn it on, I guess. So we just want to give you a quick timeline in the airport first. Um, the airport was opened in 1929. It started its first commercial service in 1934. So in its first scheduled service, uh, the first terminal construction on its kind of its site, it is the terminal is today, obviously not the original terminal, but was in 1959. In uh, 1982, we had an additional terminal expansion. And if you see this right here in the middle, um, oops, wrong button. Right here? No, one, two many back, sorry. So the Old Butte parcels of land we're discussing were all acquired by the airport through the FAA grant process between the years of 1982 to 1995. 
and we'll explain that more as we go on. Um, we continue to grow. The housing development you all live in today was annexed into the city in 1999. Um, and then we are continuing to grow today. We've had a couple more terminal expansions. Um, and we're getting ready to complete another expansion starting in the spring. So it's a very busy time at the airport. Um, and, and one thing, this really all comes down from every 10 years, the airport does a master plan of future development for the airport. And a lot of this spurred from that as we're starting the master plan. It should have been done in 2020, but we know what happened in 2020, nothing got done. Um, so we started this master plan earlier this year and we started having internal discussions about the old Butte property and the future development of it. And that's how we, it's very early. We, we have just begun the master planning process so everyone here will be invited to all those meetings and have, you know, be able to hear the discussions going on. So this is really why it's coming is we're at a time where the airport's redoing its 10 year master plan and we need to look towards the future. The airport today is the second busiest airport in the state of Idaho. Um, we had a 176 busiest airport out of 525 commercial service airports in the country. So if you, you kind of break that down, we're busier than 60% of all the other airports. So we're in the top third of, uh, of operations in the country. And we have an economic impact of over $278 million a year to the region. Um, so it's a big economic drive for the region. It, it helps the economy and it continues to grow. If you just look at our passenger numbers over the last 10 years or so, you can see why we've just about doubled all of our passengers. And we expect 2022 to be even bigger than that. If you notice in that sh slide back here, 2021 was our previous high. Well, you can see so far this year, uh, for the beginning of this year, we're even higher than we were last year or any pre other previous year. And I think it's really important to note, point out that, of course, in 2020, we had dips. But if you look at the recovery in 2020, you can see we recovered much faster than most airports. We were the fastest recovery airport for percentage to passengers to the previous years in the Pacific Northwest. So that just goes to say that it's, People are still traveling, business is still operating. I mean, these are our monthly departures. You can see in 2019, we had right around 500 monthly departures. That's a departure is a takeoff. And of course, normally with a departure is a landing, but for some reason the FAA doesn't count landings. I don't know why. But, um, but you can see today we're well over 1,000, 1,100 monthly, a thousand every month or over every, every month of this year. So it's continuing to grow. More cargo, how many people have received a UPS package, second day air, how many people ordered from Amazon? Mm -hmm. All that stuff comes through the airport. Um, a lot of that speedy delivery things, next day air, second day Amazon um, packages. So you can see even with our cargo has doubled almost in just the last four or five years. So it's very busy. And really why we're here is just, it's the time to start these discussions. The airport's growing, the community's growing. It just, it's time to start getting this, some of this information out. So you're all available and willing and hopefully it will come as we start the master planning process to be part of the process. This is an aerial uh, of the airport area. This obviously is, your, is the housing development. Here's Old Butte Park. This is the airport. So the red line are our no build restriction lines. There's supposed to be nothing in there at all unless it's aeronautical related runways, taxiways, things like that. Um, you can see it intersects that park as it is. 
this yellow area down here. So this is the most protected areas of the airport. This is what the FAA says, if a plane runs off the runway or runs off the taxiway, this is the most dangerous area to be. The rest of it is, is not, it's, you know, I mean, it's still close to an airport, but this is where we try to protect to minimize damage to everything. These are our approach zones, which we protect from development also, but it's less strict as you get away from the airport different things can happen. Here is an airport property map, and you can see, here's all the airport property. These are those, this is Old Butte Road right here. You can see all these parcels and see all these numbers. That corresponds to a parcel that was purchased by the airport using federal FAA dollars to purchase that land over those number of years for aeronautical uses. We kind of blow it up right here, and you can see those numbers correspond from one, which is part of the original airport property, to 35 and everything in between. And these highlighted numbers correspond to those. You can see where it was purchased through the AIP, the Airport Improvement Program, or back then they call it ADAP, um, from the federal government. Those are the grants it was purchased by, when it was purchased, all these type of things. All those land parcels were purchased for future aeronautical development at the airport um, by the city, because the city owns the airport, using federal dollars. So as we said, all those properties were purchased for federal grants for aeronautical use. Now we have been notified and we've known for a little while that um, the master plan was coming up, but we've notified that we're out of compliance with our federal grant assurances. So every time you take a federal grant, you basically take federal money, it comes with strings. We, we sign, and it has for 30, 40 years now, that you'll protect the land for aeronautical development, you won't misuse it, you won't misuse public funds, all these kind of things. So we have been uh, notified now that we need to fix it and um, it's perfect time because as we start the ma master planning process, I mean, everybody's probably been by the airport recently. The whole east side of the airport, the other side of the airport, is not, it's already developed out. So the master plan will come up with some plan over the next number of years to, to look at future development of the other side of the airport. And this, we'll kind of discuss the soccer fields real quick. I know there's probably some soccer people in here. We had a, a different meeting for soccer, but if PJ wants to kind of talk about that some. You bet, so I wanted to start with um, that I, I uh, probably am, am somewhat at fault for starting some of the rumors um, that are flying throughout Oak Falls. Um, I'm the Parks and Rec Director, as I had mentioned. I had um, been contacted by Rick that said, we need to get you into a contract or an agreement, a lease agreement for the soccer complex. It probably, we're not gonna be able to do much more than three to five years. So my understanding was we had three to five years before we needed to exit the, the soccer complex. So when we, we had somebody come um, to our parks office and had looked at putting in a memorial bench over in the soccer complex. Trying to, be, trying to do the right thing, one of our, our office uh, attendants had um, told that person, we're not quite sure, it might not be the best place to put it, we're not quite sure what the future of Old Butte will look like. And that started, that was the day that, that a lot of this, uh, the information was, was placed on Facebook and, and put out there. Um, we'll take some questions at the, at the end if we could. Um, but, so what I'm trying to do though is look at where, where can we as, a, as Parks and Recreation and, and needing 14 soccer fields, where are we going to be able to build so that we can continue to operate and, and have a home for you know, some, somewhere near 3,000 families in our community that play soccer. And so one of the things that we looked at was in 2014, the city um, and the Parks and Recreation Department went to council and, it, and had looked at purchasing and had pur purchased this 40-acre parcel just west of the current soccer complex. 
Um, we purchased that in 2014 with the intent of building some kind of sports complex, not knowing exactly what that would look like yet, but knowing that we have a master plan for Toffus Park that includes removing a couple of softball fields. Again, we know not, we're not able to remove softball fields, just like soccer fields, until we have some replacements. We have a high demand, high usage of all of our fields, so that was one of the, the, the needs for that piece of property at the time. Uh, since then, um, we've looked at multiple properties to, to create a few different sports complexes uh, throughout the community. Um, and this one it happens to be a perfect placement for us that if we are going to lose uh, our lease or lose use of the Old Butte Soccer Complex, that we have a place just west of there that we can operate out of still um, and, um, and have close to 18 soccer fields. Oh, sorry, excuse me. So this is a, a diagram that I put together. It's um, very um, conceptual. It's just a draft. It would need to be taken to council before anything becomes um, a, a reality. But looking at this, this does include the four fields that are on what's called New Butte. So the four, the four fields on this side of Old Butte Road is called New Butte. This section is called Old Butte. And so Rick is, is fairly confident that we should be able to, to um, because this section is going to be landlocked from the airport based off of Old Butte Road, whether Old Butte Road is here or gets moved up further here, one way or another, these are always going to be on the other side of Old Butte Road from the airport. And so he feels confident that we should be able to get the FAA to sign off on a longer term lease for these specific fields. And then we intend to build this complex or something similar to this um, with input from the soccer community, um, different user groups and uh, consultants that, would, that, that build uh, these type of facilities um, on a regular basis. We will put together some format that will help us um, offset the loss from the rest of these fields in what is currently Old Butte. Um, right now we've looked at um, adding in several sizes of fields. We've got adult fields, uh, U11 fields, and U8 fields, which kind of hits the, the broad variety of, of all the fields that we utilize throughout the, the community. And um, so we are working to um, work hand in hand with Idaho, uh, Air, Idaho Falls Airport um, to make sure that this transition happens. We, we're being told, we're being assured that we will definitely be able to build this and, and have some fields in place before we lose a lease over in Old Butte. Okay? What's next? So one of the reasons why we wanted to collect uh, emails, as we mentioned on your way in, um, was the airport is going to continue to work on a master plan and have public meetings um, with that process. Um, we wanna make sure that we encourage those who live around the airport or those who are, have a vested interest in what happens in the future to come be part of those discussions, be, be there when the discussions are happening and taking place um, and be part of that process. And then Parks and Recreation is going to work on, on finding locations and identifying replacements for the loss of, of nearly 14 fields here in our community. So I just want to go back and really try to explain to everybody that, you know, this land was purchased for aeronautical use back in the 80s and the 90s. It was always going to be for aeronautical use at some point. Back in the 1990s, it probably wasn't as, as, as critical at the time. Somebody decided to put some soccer fields in there. Probably a great thing to do, but the community's growing, the airport's growing. It's just the point where you know change is going to happen. We don't have answers when it's going to happen. It could be five, ten. I mean, the master plan will flush out some of those things and be able to answer those questions. But growth and you know ec the economy answers most of those questions. When the time is right, something will happen. Um, we don't know what's going to be put in there yet. It could be buildings. It could be aeronautical type uses. It could be airport auxiliary buildings. It could be anything. But, you know, it's just time as the airport grows. All that land on the other side was purchased and developed through the federal grant process. 
for future development and we're just at the point in life where we're needing to start to plan for that future. Um, and, and I would, you know, just, uh, you know, ask everybody to, to watch, you know, connect to the Facebook, the airport Facebook and Instagram sites, the city Instagram and Facebook and web pages and things. All the, the master plan meetings will be announced on those sources. We have emails, we'll send them out now, they'll be announced in papers, so um, you'll be part of the process as we go forward in the planning. So like we said, we're gonna break up now. Um, we're not gonna answer questions in this group, we said that in the beginning. We'll be able to answer some questions for about the next 30 minutes in the two corners, and then we really don't have a whole lot of answers tonight anyways. This is just to open the dialogue for It's very specific that it was Idaho Falls City owned. It's, it's owned by the city, but it's for airport use. Well, it's, it's always been. There's a designation on that. And so when important people are buying a house and they know to look at the zoning, they look to see what the future development might hold. And they look at the parcel map, which I did. They had nothing on there that would indicate that you are going to go do this. Well, I can't answer that. I wasn't here 20 years ago. You're the one who I called, and you said you're the one who told me this stuff. And you said I could use your name. About the mention stuff. So, yes, you're part of the rumor problem. And I appreciate you saying you're part of it. Well, I want to know why this transparency is all important now. Yeah. yeah. After we found yeah, out. Yeah, after the fact. After the fact. We, we were starting the master plan. We're, we're not, we're not going to take abuse up here. We can end the meeting now oh, we if you feel like. Our houses, though? But nobody's doing that. We're trying to inform you that we'll be having the master planning process going forward, and we hope you're all part of it. We can answer some questions separately, and we can try to help out tonight as many answers as we have. We don't have a whole lot of answers. We don't know what's going to be built there. But if you go check the deeds, property maps, whatever, you check the deeds at, at Bonneville County, it says purchase for aeronautical uses. So I, I think, uh, I don't know, I was, in 1982 I was in grammar school or something, so I don't know what happened back then. I can't answer those questions. That's how well and good that don't give old Butte Village annex to the city, have everybody develop their property, take care of their property, you collect our taxes on our property, and then move in a bunch of warehouses. Yeah. Do you guys have like, like we said, you, we, we don't know if there's warehouses going in there. We don't know what's going in there. You guys have houses built, houses paid for. Houses don't say you guys, because it wasn't me. <laughs> is, there, is there any way you can show us on the map where the property ends across the soccer field? I was going to say, why don't we go through the corners like he's asked yeah. us to, so that we can be supportive and try to be constructive with this? Because I'm just like you, I don't want to leave my house, but I'd rather talk about it than say, I don't want to talk about this and shut him down. For the record, my HOA says that it's part of the airport and has restrictions on the airport, so at least for you, 